rise up and start clapping and praising the Lord as we get ready for all the people to come in on Facebook. Amen? Come on, let's, do, let's get ready to worship the Lord. Lord, we want to bless you tonight, Lord God. We pray you, Father God, we enter your gates with thanksgiving. We come into your courts with praise. For you, O oh Lord, are worthy, O oh God, worthy to receive our praise and honor tonight, Lord God. We come to worship you, Lord God, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. 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 We worship you, Father. We bless you, Lord, for you are the mighty God. You are the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father. You are God. You are almighty. We praise you, Lord God. We worship you, Father. And we just humble ourselves before you tonight, Father. We come before you, Father God, with thanksgiving in our heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you, Father. <laughs> I guess you see I'm the opener tonight. And I want to start by um, reading Psalms 100. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord and all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Know, perceive, and recognize, and understand with approval that the Lord is God, and it is he who has made us, we not of ourselves, and we are his. We are the people of his pasture. Amen? Amen. Father, we enter your gates with thanksgiving, and we bring a thank offering to you tonight, Lord God. We come into your courts with praise, being thankful, Lord God. And we say so to him, bless and affectionately. We praise his name, amen. For God is good, and his mercy and loving kindness are everlasting and everlasting. He is faithful and true, endures through all generations, amen. We're all generations. So, Father, we just come before you tonight in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, as we gather here tonight to give you thanks and praise you, Father, for all your goodness and all your greatness and all your faithfulness. Welcome, Turning Point Fellowship, to Bible study Thursday night. Amen. Welcome. We want to thank you for that you chose to come here tonight to Bible study. We want to welcome all of our family and friends here tonight from Facebook. You are chosen and you are here with us tonight. Amen. So, Father God, we ask that you would open our ears to hear so that we may be able to hear your voice Open our minds so we may receive eternal wisdom. Amen? Amen. Open our spirits so we may know your leading and your guidance of your Holy Spirit. Open our hearts to receive your wonderful love. Amen? Amen. Open our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears to hear, to see what the Holy Spirit wants for us tonight. Amen? Amen. And, Father, we also want to uplift and thank you for Pastor Angel's healing. We thank you, Father, for his victory. We thank you, Lord God, for his recovery. We thank you, Lord God, for his restoration, that you are healing him, oh God. He's being restored from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And, Father, he's getting better every day, strong, stronger, every day with Jesus. Amen? So, Brother Ajay will introduce the worship team. Amen? Hallelujah. Is this church alive? Yeah. Amen. Come on to the front and worship the Lord with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Go Sante, go Sante. Hope erupting, oh, hope erupting, God is shaking, faith is rising, we know, we know, we know, heart be racing, the living, living in your freedom, joy overflowing, we know, we know, we know. The church is alive. 
church is alive. Our hope, our hope forever is the name of Jesus. We are free and you are with us. The church is alive. The church is alive. Passion burning. Passion burning. Vision growing. The church declaring. We know, we know. We know, we know, we know our hope. Our hope forever is the name of Jesus. We are free and you are with us. The church is alive. The church is alive. Our hope, our hope forever is the name. Is the name of Jesus. We are free and you are with us. The church is alive. Church is alive. Come on, give him a shout of victory. A shout of praise. A shout of freedom. We are free. We are free. We are free. This is what it sounds like. This is what it sounds like. Come on, sing it out. This is what it looks like. And this is what it feels like when the church is alive. Alive. This is what it, this is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like when the church is alive. Church is alive. This is what it sounds like. And this is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. And this is what it feels like when the church is alive. Church is alive. And this is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. And this is what it feels like. When the church is alive. The church is alive. Our hope, our hope forever is the name of Jesus. We are free and you are with us. The church is alive. Church is alive, our hope, our hope forever is the name, the name of Jesus. We are free and you are with us. The church is alive, the church is alive, when the church is alive. Church is alive, the church is alive. Church is alive, when the church is alive. When the church is alive. When the church is alive, when the church is alive, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let your worship be heard.
tithe and offering. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. What an atmosphere that was and is. We are still worshiping the Lord right now. Um, this afternoon when I was reading my Bible, uh, I was asking the Lord, you know, what can you give me for the people, for us, or the family? And um, I got uh, out of Mark 4, 8. And another seed fell into good soil. And as the plants grew and increased, they yield a crop and produce 30, 60, and 100 times as much as had been sown. And he said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear and heed my words. Man, when I read that, I was just thinking about how, and from where we were in Santa Fe Springs, from the parking lot, from the, the, the saloon, I called it the saloon, and um, to here, I mean, wow. It's, it's just such a, such a beauty, such a beautiful thing. You know, um, I just, he's so good. The Lord is so good. So when I was reading it, um, you know, the Lord was, he was teaching um, people the word. And he was talking about our heart, the heart of man. So, you know, when we give, we give with grateful hearts, with thankful hearts. So, you know, let's all give out with, um, with a joyful heart. Um, we don't um, take your offering. We ask you to bring it up and we receive it. So um, for Facebook and uh, YouTube, we have a number, a text give, or to anyone that doesn't have cash, we have a number, uh, 714 Four seven 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 three six. It's a uh, text give to, and um, also like us on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube, please. Um, go ahead and if whoever needs an envelope, please raise your hand. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. 
at nine we're gonna have food um invite someone uh power of an invite guys you know um a text we have that awesome flyer that Tomas made um I, if you need it let me know I'll text it to you and you can send it out to someone okay and then we also have our potluck this weekend Woo! soup and sandwiches <laughs> oh man I love to eat, so we're going to have some good uh, soup, some sandwiches. I believe we have a list outside that you can sign up. If you want to bring something, please um, help out. We need waters. We need, um, you know, uh, punches and stuff like that for the kids. So please invite her in again, you know. And then we also have the women's meeting next yeah! Saturday, December 10th <laughs> at 10 a.m. <laughs> Woo! Bobby Joe. <laughs> yes, that's, that's going to be a blessing as well. I don't know who's speaking. Do we know who's speaking? We don't know yet. Oh, you are. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Sister's going to be speaking, so it's going to be good. I'm, I'm happy about that. And then uh, what else do we got? We have a Christmas celebration, a special Christmas celebration service on, what is it, December 18th on Sunday. So please come out. Come in your nice... Suit it and boot it. Looking nice, you know? And then uh, also we have prayer on Tuesday nights on Zoom at 7 p.m. I believe Sister Bobby handles that. Um, the code is right there. If you need the code, we can text it out to you or email you or we can call you and we can give you that code. And we have, of course, Bible study on Thursdays nights at 7 o'clock. Invite someone, please. Power of an invite, family. That's what it's about. That's how I came to this church, from someone telling my wife and I about this church, and that's how we started coming. So, you know, I know you guys know a lot of people out there. You know, it's invite, invite. Okay, so we have something special today. We have a sister's birthday today. Literally, today is her birthday. <laughs> We're going to sing happy birthday to her, Sister Desiree Sandoval. Woo! We love to celebrate people. There's her cake. We're going to uh, sing happy birthday and a one and a two and a three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. You're 21? You're 21? Happy birthday. All right. Praise God. All right. We, we can dismiss the uh, worship team. Woo! Give them a hand. Awesome job. Awesome job. And we can also uh, dismiss all the children and teens as well. All right.
And before we start, um, if there's any newcomers, um, see Brother Ryan in the back. He has an information card. He, uh, raise your hand, please, and we'll hand you that card so we can get your information. Uh, we would love to have you come back. Okay, uh, before we start, man, I'm happy because I, my brother is going to come up here and give. This is the first time I'm going to be able to hear my brother speak. So let's all give everybody a good, or give uh, Brother Andy a big, warm welcome. Andy Mayer, Andy Mayer. Right? <laughs> oh, it's on. I can hear it. It's on. Oh, you're all standing. Oh, I remember these parts. This is, yeah, I know. This is where I tell you to sit down, right? No, nah, not yet. No, oh, we'll just pray, and then I'll have you guys be seated. Okay, so if you bow your hearts and heads right here right quick. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this uh, awesome opportunity, Lord God, to uh, help minister to your children, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that make it that it's not me, but it's you that comes out, Lord. Let it come out with love, Lord God. Let them know that my heart's desire is for them and myself and all of us to become what you've called us to become, Lord God. So if there's some sharpening going on, Lord, let them receive that, Heavenly Father. And let me deliver it in grace. And uh, we just thank you for the good time, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now you can have a seat. need my glasses. <laughs> Pastor Eric said, have fun. I'm like, I don't know. That, that, I can have too much fun. I don't know if that's a good thing. I can get carried away. You know, uh, I know this is an awesome thing to have to do. You got me all jammed up here. Uh, there we go. Uh, well, most of you know who I am. Um, Yep, uh, Andy Mayer, and we've been here for a while. <laughs> I don't know how long, but what some of the things I've done, most of my ministry time has all been, oh, Pastor Hell, good to see you, right in the middle. <laughs> that I've done about 35 years of men's ministry, Brother Eric, and, and then I did children's ministry. And then I've done one wedding to our account. I have one wedding on my book now, so I can check that box too. But honestly, I don't normally speak to men and women. I speak to men. And when I speak to men, I speak to them as men. So some of this might be rough. <laughs> I, could, I can somewhat apologize a little bit, but... Not really, because this is what I believe God has told me to put out for you guys. So, here you go. Some of the things that we've had over the years, my wife and I, we've been, uh, we've had, uh, oh, Nina, you're trying to sneak in, girl, and I got you. <laughs> my baby girl trying to sneak in. Can't do it. I kind of like it up here. This is fun. You can do away with good stuff. <laughs> I, okay, Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm a, Oh, Pastor Angel, I love you. Yes, yes. And I'm going to do my best to make you proud. Yes. And uh, the thing, some of the things that have really turned here, you guys mute me. <laughs> I'm telling you, you got to watch them. That prophetic words. A lot of us here have had prophetic words. A lot of us, like I'm like going, every single one of you have had a prophetic word at some time or another. And I don't know if you guys know how powerful that is and how much that can impact your life if you grab onto it, if you nourish it, if you take hold of it and let it grow. Because I've had words over the years that's, that my wife and I would be in ministry together. And 
Pastor L just threw one of them out us last week. And, but over the year, we had them way in the back, years back. And uh, <laughs> I, could, I could tell you some scriptures, and that'll help tell you what, how important this is. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4 and 5, I got a lot of scriptures, but I don't know if I'll get to them all. And I don't know, I don't know, I just don't know. We'll just see where we go from here. But I do know how important uh, these words of God's people get into us. Oh, boy. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 5. Oh, there you go. So there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to other the interpretation of tongues. Right there, another prophecy. So the Bible speaks of Prophecy, the word is a prophetic word. These words, oh, Bobby, I got her pen, by the way. In these words, 2 Peter 1, 19 through 21, please. These words, these prophetic words that go out, and so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed, as a light that shines in the dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Pastor L had this one the other day. So these prophetic words over the years have, some of them I thought I had one once and it came and I had just started a new job and this prophet said, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a change. There's a change coming. It's, going to, it's coming right down the road. It's going to be right on time. It's going to seem like it's late, but it's going to be right on time. And that word I sat back on and went, that guy missed it. This guy missed it. I just started this new job, and I know this is not, it, it, I don't see how that happened. I couldn't see myself getting to the place that God, I felt that God was going to take me to. So I got somewhat despaired. I felt like I wasn't going to move any further. See, a lot of us are going through, you guys are all going through seasons of life. And I feel a lot of you guys are in what I call the production stage of life, where you, you, the seasons of life are preparation, production, your ministry, and then statesmanship towards the end when you get the elders and stuff like that. So you prepare by going to school. And then once we go to school, then we start we actually get a job, we get married, we produce, you have babies, you have kids, and you get in what a lot of people call the grind. And the, the married people can, the younger ones or the ones in the middle of that right now know what's going on. And I remember going through the grind <laughs> and not knowing, man, this thing is like, you know, you look at the seniors and they're off driving new trucks and they're just enjoying life like that. And they forget all about the hardships that we had gone through when we went through when we were younger. But we went through everything, everything that I'm going to say here tonight that me and my wife, Bobby, have gone through. We've gone through times of nothing. We've bought cars out of a junkyard, and I'd brought them home, and I'd repair them and make them run. And that was her new car. And I presented it to her. Here's your new car, honey. <laughs> and she loved it. She was, she was very satisfied with that. And I praise God for that because she didn't need any, anything else. <laughs> she was good with that. So I know, this, I, know, I know those struggles in those years. You guys now have a completely different set of struggles 
that you're going through. But we've all gone through some sort of struggle to get to that. And I held on to these prophetic words. And that one word, I'll never forget it. He was like, this is how it's going to go. One of them was that I was going to be a water wheel, or Bobby was a water wheel, and that she was going to have a ministry. She was in women's ministry. I was in men's ministry. And that she was going to be going, and I was going to come alongside of her and help her. And that's what we've started to do. Anytime that she has ministry, if I'm off, I go help her. Because I know she's the best part of me over there. She's where I got to be because of the sacrifices that this one has made for me along the way. I'm even going to get into marriage because she did things for me. And I was like, my gosh, this woman would do anything for me. She would take a bullet for me. And I can at least not, I could change. There's some things that I just needed to change. Well, I'm getting way ahead of myself. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So in these words where it says, and, we, and Fred said it today on his verse, it was to take heed. In 2 Peter 1, 19 through 21, it said you would do well to take heed. To take heed means to listen and follow. Give serious attention to. It's warnings or advice. So these words that some of you have gotten, and I know there, a lot of them were as a couple. A lot of them were family, husband and wife. There was a lot of individuals, but when two are called, two become one. And that's what me and her are. So her ministry is my ministry. My ministry is her ministry. She does, I help her. I help her any way I can. She helps me any way I can. We've done that our whole life. She's always been there. She used to take the kids away so I could study when I was trying to get a bigger license. She would take the kids out and leave me so I had the house. We had a three-bedroom house, and I would just stay in the living room. That's where I did everything right there. And, and she would take the kids, and they would go away for the whole day and let me just study, 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 study so I could get to where I needed to go. And then when that prophetic word came, I got my license, and I didn't get the job. I was <laughs> like, what the heck? <laughs> You know, so I, I started to get to where I'm like, oh, maybe it's not going to happen. But I stayed with it. We stayed with it because all those words, they're so important. I, I just can't get over. I can't stress enough to you how important this was. In Numbers 23, 12, you have, uh, this is the story of Balak, Balak and Balaam to where he, Balak, he says, yeah. He tries bribing them with all sorts of stuff to go to tell Balaam to give the Israelites his people. He says, I want you to, I want you to curse those people. I want you to say bad things about them. And what I read in there was he said he could speak only what God has put in his mouth. So those prophetic words that you guys have gotten are only what God has put in that prophet's mouth. There's people here that have given you guys prophecy, and I heard it, and I watched it happen, and those, those are men. These are the men that are of high regard, is what I'm trying to tell you. I got you, Fred. Thank you. <laughs> so this is something that they, you need to take heed to what these words are. You need to really respect the word and that person that gave it to you. Because that's what we said as is a holy man of God. That word, that word is so heavy that I can't, I can't tell you how important that is. That's why I went into just these, the prophetic words. In uh, Colossians 4, 17. Oh, it's something about Numbers 23, 12 there in just a minute. I thought this was pretty interesting. So you guys know the story of Balak and Balaam and Balaam's donkey. He's riding on the donkey and he's taken and the angel of the Lord stood there and to stop Balaam from going to go curse his people. Right? He said, I'm not going to do it. But he, he stood there 
And the donkey saw the angel and he said, well, I'm not going that way. So the donkey went down, Balaam beat him. Then he went to the right and <laughs> he beat him again. And finally the donkey kneeled down because he saw the angel of the Lord that was stopping Balaam from getting through. But he got to a point in this narrow cutaway, I guess you'd call it, to where the donkey couldn't go left, he couldn't go right. So he was in this channel and he just knelt down like this. And when he knelt down like that, Balaam was like, and he beat him again. He beat the donkey again to tell him to go. And the donkey turned around and talked to him and said, why are you beating me? That's what he said. He said, why are you beating me? And without any hesitation at all, this is what I was tripping on, was Balaam talked right back to the donkey. He didn't say, oh my gosh, the donkey's speaking. He was like, because I'm telling you to go, you know. <laughs> So to me, I didn't catch that till today. I was like, holy mackerel. The donkey turned right around and said, hey, man, why are you beating me? He said, because I'm telling you to go. He didn't say, oh, my gosh, a donkey's talking to me. Maybe I should pay attention to this. So that one, that, that, I got tickled out of that. I'm like, nobody even said anything. It says, the guy thought it was good, right? So that one, that one there was, uh, <laughs> is it up there? Yeah, what have you done to me? I took my curse to enemies. Yeah, he says, oh yeah, this is when, so Balaam can't do anything against God's word that he put out. So he had, he could only say what God has told him to say. So these prophetic words, again, I'm speaking heavily on these prophetic words, and I'll tell you why, that the prophets aren't going to say, oh, this is, this is that, and thus saith the Lord. I mean, it's heavy when you get a word. Pastor Eric can tell you, Pastor L, when you do get a word and you're going you're gonna to give it to somebody, man, I sit on it because I get really nervous because there's a lot of weight to that. Man, you could tell somebody something and send them sideways, you know, and you're responsible for them. So, and these men that do deliver a word, they have already been proven that they are trustworthy. So that's where he says, he said, what have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemies, and look, you have blessed them. And that's where Balaam says, I can only do what God puts in my mouth. So what have you done to help these words that you've been given grow? What have you guys done to help these things grow? These things all depend on attitude and action. Amen. Because you can take it and go, huh. I ain't thinking nothing of that. Oh, by the way, my word that, that I thought was missed it, he wasn't on time. Well, guess what? Of course. He was right on time. And when it happened, I knew, I knew for sure it was that moment. I was like, oh my gosh, this is that time. This is that time. Jean was bummed. <laughs> she didn't realize what a blessing it was. And that's what happened. I ended up getting a call and going to work. Because I saw these other people, ah, I could go on and on with that. There's a couple other words I got out of this whole thing too. So, God will work with us only if we allow ourselves to be used. So he'll only move as much as you allow him to move. God's a gentleman. So if you don't allow him to move, well, he can't force you to do anything. Those words, those words, those words. So powerful, these words that came across. Mm. <laughs> so these prophetic words are so strong, right? And these past few weeks, months, I guess, I'd say these past few months, I believe in... Again, I'm going to give you this first. In my marriage at times, there's been friction. There's been tension. We've, we've come to a point at one time in our marriage that at year 35 of our marriage, we've been married 45. I did the test today to make sure I was right in the car. I go, are we going on 46 or 47? She goes, what, 45? 
So praise God, 45 years. But at year 35, yeah, I'm not going to tell them what you did. Right. So, <laughs> but we've had our trying experiences at home. We've had friction. And when there's tension in a marriage and when there's friction, two things rub together, they get hot. When they get hot, you could possibly get a fire. If you get a fire, you got damage. And then things are on fire and the place is going out of control. You got to put the fire out. You put the fire out and you got to rebuild all over again. Don't let it get to that point. Don't let it get to that point. You don't have to let it go to that point. So I've sensed that in marriages here. I've sensed that in marriages here. That's where I was going to tell you it was going to be rough. Because I know I sense it. Your households are supposed to be a safe haven for your kids. We got the testimony of... Of where Aaron? Aaron's already Aaron. Yeah, from Desiree and Jesus's house, because they had a a safe, humble home. They were able to draw kids to them. We used to draw kids to our house. You know, it was like a lighthouse. <laughs> they called us once. One of the prophetic words was, "You guys are going to be a lighthouse." And then, of course, Bobby went out and bought thirty lighthouses for the house, <laughs> which I'll sell. Hey, 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 we have, oh my gosh, we had lighthouses, right? Come on. So, so, but that's what your families, your homes are called to be. They're all called to be a lighthouse. You know, this is, this is your ministries. This is our ministry. This is, we're going to go to the next level. And for us to go to the next level, we got to sort some stuff out. The world's not going to want to come in and go, shoo, that house is chaos, man. That's the same way my house is. I don't need any part of that. Oh, boy. Okay. Yep, here we go. <laughs> Let me look at Colossians 3.18 and see what that looks like. Oh, yeah, that's the right one. Let me make sure I got it right. Yep, that's the one. <laughs> Wives, submit to your husbands. Yeah, I know it. Wives, submit to your own husbands as is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, here's the one. Love your wives. Do not be bitter towards them. Don't be bitter towards them. What do you think bitter is? Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Right? You know what bitter means? I'm going to start on the men first. Okay, wives? You all right with that? Hi, Diz. Happy birthday. Bitter, and I've been guilty of this. That's awful. Bitter means you hold a grudge you hold a grudge. You always complaining. You're not grateful for all the good that are in your lives. You can't share in someone else's joy. You bring up, you dwell on hurtful events. Bitter. Husbands, love your wives as is fitting to the Lord. Children, obey your parents. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. You guys been bitter towards them ever? Yeah, I have. You cause them to hurt more than they should hurt? Yes, sir. Yeah, for sure. We all have. So have I. That's not what God's called us to do. Oh, no, I'll get to the wives. <clears throat> Ephesians 5, 22. <laughs> okay. 
right? Yeah. Wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the church, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for it. That's what he did. Men, you're called to love your wife, You're called to love your wife. You're called to love your wife. There is no yeah, but in there. It doesn't go, yeah, but, what a, no. It doesn't say, yeah, but, she's a, no, yeah, but. There is no, it said, husbands, love your wives. That is the commandment. <laughs> Not used to this one. Let me check it. Inside joke. <laughs> uh, Ephesians 5.33. Right there. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. That's kind of all we need, men. Is, well, no kids, right? Yeah. There's only a couple things men need. Respect and love. Okay? Respect, for you wives who don't know what that means, is, a, is when you admire someone's qualities or achievements. You esteem them. You place them high on high regard. You have high value for them. You have high worth for them. You have regard for one another. You regard their wishes or interests more than your own. That is respect. First Peter 3, 1 through 4. Here we go back to the wives again. Likewise, you wives, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. That's right. There it is, is right. Wives, you can win that man over just by being nice. Your know, pastor's words, here you are, pastor, your words are be nice. Be nice. Don't beat them on the head. Be nice. When they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear, fear, not fear of like physical fear, but just fear and respect. That's right. Thank you, Fred. Do not let your beauty be that of outward adorning or arranging of hair or wearing gold or putting on fine apparel. But let that hidden person that's inside of you of the heart, which is Incorrupt, I wish with the incorruptible ornament of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. So how much easier is it to just end it? You can't fight when two people, if one shuts up, well, the fight's over. You, there, is no more, there is no more arguing. And finally, 1 Peter 3, 7 through 9. This is for you men. <laughs> Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. You want God to hear your prayers? Love your wives with understanding. Give honor to them. Remember, you're a team. You guys, it's not all for, you're all not one out for yourself. You guys are, we're a team. 
I know we're more of a team ministry, and I know there's more things that Bobby and I are going to be called to do. I've heard it. I've seen it in the past. They, they said it, prophetic words, over and over, and we've watched them go and, and watched them come to pass. So as they're coming to pass, I just know we're just going to continue, continue to go and go and go. So what happens? What happens? First Peter 3, 7 and 9. <sighs> so that your prayers won't be answered. Verse 8. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tender hearted and courteous not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling. On the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. Amen. Not returning evil for evil. What happens in a fight? There's evil for evil, right? That's what happens. I know we do it. We've done it. It's been evil for evil. And I'm going to tell you, one of the things that has seem to come up and uh, I'm going to give you something that God dropped straight in me during a argument one time. And I'll tell you what the argument was. The argument was when one of our children did what they weren't supposed to do. And any time, you guys got kids that disobey at times along the way? No? <laughs> <laughs> right? All the time. Right? All the time. All the time. All the time. Okay? So here you go. This, is, this was a da -da moment for me when I got this. This was a revelation from God. So what would happen was, in our case, it was my fault because I didn't either give them some other kind of Bible study or I didn't... Uh, train with them all night, I didn't take them to some seminar, or I didn't do something that was always a something that we could have done more. And yep, could we have done more? Yeah, absolutely, we could have done more. But what we would do every night, which I'm sure you parents do also, is you pray for your kids, you pray for your children. And our prayers used to be, Lord, we know we missed it, so just fill in those gaps. Because I always see kids like this, our prayers like this, and God would come over with like spackle, with mud, and just go right over that thing and just fill in that gap, and God would take care of that. So this was, this was a, constant, a constant thing, because it's always, you should have done that if you had taken the Bible study, or if you would have spent more time with them, or if you didn't work all the time, if you weren't gone all the way, if you didn't spend all the money. It was always back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, why our kids would do something wrong. And I mean, this, this went on from the time they were like nine, 10 years old, seven years old. They still do wrong. They come right out, they come right out, of, out of the women and right away, bam, you know, two years old, do that. No, how do you know no? How do they know no? They know no right away. We're born into a sinful world, right? Because of Adam and Eve, right? Well, that's where I, this is where it started to go. So, as we were arguing one time about this, you know, it's our fault. And, and moms, I have to say, take it way worse than dads. They're like, if their kid fails or, or fouls up or gets in trouble, skips out at nighttime, ditches school or something like that, it's like, it's like they did it. You know, they're like, oh, oh, he embarrassed me. He did this. I'm like, oh, stupid kid, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, I had something to do with it, but, you know, I'm like, but, but moms, moms, you moms, man, thank God for you moms, because you guys hold a whole lot of this outfit together. And anyway, we would, we would argue about that. And it would constantly be, you should have did that. You should have done that. And I would tell her, you, I couldn't do that because of this. I'm trying to make money. I'm trying to, you know, we're trying to buy a house and we're trying to buy a car and put kids through school and all this sort of stuff. So the man's in their production stage. The wife is like yelling at you. We homeschooled our kids too, by the way. Woo! Right. So they were constantly there. Anyway, the kids 
did wrong, right? They, they disobeyed and they did this. And we constantly had this bickering going back and forth. And then God gave me this. And this is something that will free you women up if you don't know this. So I got right away when this argument was happening, I started thinking about Adam and Eve, right? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, right? Who was Adam and Eve's parents? God, right? So God, being the perfect parent, right? He trained them. He gave them instruction, told them what to do and what not to do. And God, being the perfect parent, gave them perfect instructions. And Adam and Eve still sinned and disobeyed. Did God fail? No, absolutely not. God did not fail. That means you moms, you dads, you moms, you dads, all you moms and dads, you didn't fail. Your sons or daughters chose of their own free will to go do what they wanted to do. It is not your fault. It is not his fault. It is not her fault. They chose. They chose. Right there. <laughs> that was good, huh? Seriously, when you think about it, I mean, when I got that revelation, I'm like, oh my gosh, that freed me up so much. And I wanted to free up you moms. Because you moms wear this. Sheesh. You guys take it so hard when, when your kids foul up, you know, and it's not because of what you've done. It's not because of you've done. And Brother Ted's a great one. I got to give it to him as far as knowing when he did wrong, Ted's testimony is awesome. And he said, it wasn't anybody's fault. It was, my mom, it was my own fault. It wasn't my mom's fault. I chose to do this. And I said, that man got it. You know, he knew that it wasn't anybody else's fault. He didn't try and blame shift an alibi like Adam, you know. Where are you? I'm like, I mean, God ask him where he is. He knows he's right there. You know, where are you? Right? So when I would discipline my kids, I'd see him throwing rocks at the garage. I go outside, I go, what are you doing? Huh? I go, what are you doing? Uh, throwing rocks at the garage. Ah, you supposed to do that? No. Well, what happens when you disobey? I guess I got to get punished. I go, hey, okay, let's go. <laughs> but we didn't yell and scream, and God processed them right there. That's what God did with Adam and Eve. He said, where are you? Well, Hello. You know, what are you doing? <laughs> what do you do all that? So that was that to me when I got that. And, and really, that's what I wanted to convey to you moms and dads tonight is that that's that's not it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Your adult kids or young kids or, you know, when they're younger. OK, I mean, there's a lot to do to to do that. But if you're praying, if you're trying to cover them with everything like I know you are, when they get up and they sneak out of the house or they tell you they're here and they're not over there, you know. It's not your fault. You didn't do it. It's not you. They chose to go that way. You moms need to free that up. You've got to get that. Like I said, our, our houses are to be a sanctuary, a safe sanctuary. So a part of my challenge for you guys tonight I'm going to show you something. You show me that uh, first one, Jesus, please. I show this to the men up there at the mountain. That there, as you well know, is a lighthouse. And I know we were called to be lighthouses. And you families that are out there, you, you families, all you families, all you families, all you got, all your households are to be one of these lighthouses. And that lighthouse right now is going through a storm. And I shared with the men up there on Sunday that when we leave the mountain up there, we're coming down and some of us could be coming into that right there. Our call was to stand fast, just like the lighthouse is. The storm, I told them, won't last. The storm won't last. I've been in big storms, big seas for a long time, but they end and then you get flat water. And then we went to this next one right here 
that one right there. And our theme was steadfast. And when everybody saw that, this is another picture of a lighthouse that a guy took in France. And that's the lighthouse keeper right there. So when I saw that picture today, I saw it in a completely different look. I saw that man, there's a man standing in there, you barely see him, but he's standing down at the bottom of that with that ginormous wave crashed all around him right there. And he was, if you see the picture, you zoom in on him, he's just standing here like this. He has that peace of knowing, my lighthouse is going to stand. My lighthouse is going to stand. I don't have to worry, my lighthouse is going to stand. But what I got out of it today was, if he doesn't move now, he needs to take action. He needs to step inside and close the door. Because if he doesn't step inside and close the door, him and that wave is going to fill his house. And I'll ask you all today, who is having the door open of your lighthouse at home? And what are you letting in to your lighthouse at home? Are you bringing it in? Are you allowing it in? Are you helping to bring it in? Or are you shutting the door and telling the enemy you're going to get out and you're going to stay away from my children and I'm going to be a lighthouse and we're going to be a dry lighthouse inside. And our light is going to resonate as, we're, as the word says, your light, you're set up upon a hill. <laughs> I didn't get that verse. Our, you're set upon a hill as a light that shines right there. You don't put the lamp underneath. You put the light stand. It gives light to everyone in the house. So in the same way, your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. So my challenge to you guys are, is your door open? Have you opened the door? Are you helping the, are you letting the storm inside? Or are you closing the door to keep it out? That's even with family members, outside family members can come and try to get into your lighthouse. Don't let them. Don't let them rob you of, of, your, of making your light shine. Because when, when we go, after you shut the door and that storm ends, next one, that's what you're to be right there. Amen. That's what we're to be. See, the storm ended, your light shining, and that people are going to come. Children are going to come. People are going to be coming. Whether you're, light, whether you're, you're a senior, whether you're older, whatever whatever season of life you're in right now, we're still called to be a lighthouse and to bring those people to God. Amen. That's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> uh, Pastor Eric, have you got something or... That was my, that's my charge to you. Women and men, it's not your fault. When your children go sideways and do something, it wasn't your fault. Adam and Eve had the perfect parent, and they still failed. Right? So if they did, being the perfect parent, we're far from perfect. And Adam and Eve still failed, right? Or they fouled up. They were able to redeem themselves, thank God. That's what I want you to get across there. And that your lighthouse, don't let the enemy in your lighthouse. Amen. Men, love your wives. Women, be nice. Amen. Be nice. Love your wives. Men, love your wives more than you ever have before. Amen. That's what I got for you tonight. God, what a great word. Amen. Amen. I was just telling uh, Andy is that 
He's going to, especially, it should be up for all of us. Because whether you're married or not, you can still, in your home, let a door open and the enemy come in. So he's going to lead all of us in a prayer of repentance and that that door closes. Amen? Amen. So go ahead. Uh, okay. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, first off, for the opportunity to uh, speak your words, Lord God. And Lord, ask right now in the times that I've left the door open and ushered the storm in myself, Heavenly Father, forgive me. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's just repeat after me with that. Lord Jesus, Jesus. forgive me me. for allowing the door to be open and bringing in of my own hands unclean things that don't belong in my house. Forgive me and cleanse my house right now in Jesus' name. I forgive my wife. Wives, I forgive my husbands of all the hurt and wrong we've done to each other. From now on, I'm going to be sweet to my husband. To my wife, thank you. (laughs) I'm going to love my husband. I'm going to love my wife. Husbands, we're going to love our wives. Husbands, we're going to love our wives. Wives, we're going to respect our husbands. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Cleanse my house. Right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Well, you know, God's the God of new beginnings. Take this word and apply it to your life and apply it to your home and apply it to your family. Because if you don't, then it'll just keep on going. So, praise God. Father, I just thank you for... Those that watch on Facebook and YouTube, those that are here tonight, Lord, we bless every person that came in, that they got a word and it was planted on good ground in the name of Jesus. I thank you for blessing them. We'll be returning here Sunday morning with a great expectation to have an encounter with God. Lord, we thank you for blessing everyone in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You're dismissed.